peanut beetles. I told my wife that I was doing a video on peanut beetles, and she just looked at me with that blank deer in the headlights look. Like, how am I going to make peanut beetles interesting? Let's see if we can do that here. How can we make peanut beetles interesting? Of course, I have food out and Gus has just joined us. We'll see if we can make peanut beetles interesting. A little peanut butter. Just enough. Okay, a little, few little peanut beetles on the bread. Oops, one's getting out there. Are you ready? Not what I expected. A little peanut butter on the roof of my mouth. Not bad. Peanut beetles. Why are we talking about peanut beetles? Well, for number one, hold on just a second. A little peanut butter stuck on the roof of my mouth. Number one, peanut beetles are super easy to breed. Number two, they're very, very small. I have a lot of small geckos and I need a lot of food to feed those geckos. And peanut beetles fill that niche. And number three, I can keep a lot of peanut beetles in a very, very small area. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. This is a common culture of peanut beetles, and this is just a starter. I think I started it uh, at the beginning of this month, so about two or three weeks ago. And it's already going really strong. So a peanut beetle culture is made up of a lot of wheat, peanuts, of course, and the beetles. That's pretty much it. The peanut beetle beetles are about an eighth of the size of a beetle for the mealworms. And the peanut beetle worms are actually very, very small. Let me see if I can get a couple out here so we can see them. Here's a quick comparison between the two different beetles, the peanut beetles and the mealworm beetles. You can see the pupa on the bottom, the worms on the left, and the beetles on the right. Let me go ahead and grab another culture of these peanut beetles so that we can see a little bit more of the beetles. This is a culture I initially started with about four or five months ago. You can see it's really taking off and a lot of them are hiding right now because I just pulled them out. The two difficult things with peanut beetles is they are very hard to find. It took me about a month to find a source for these peanut beetles. And the second issue is trying to harvest them. To put a piece of paper uh, plate in here to see if I could uh, get a, a group of them. And it didn't work out that well. What I have found is that if you take food, put them in the, the container, and then lift up the food items in about 10 to 15 minutes, you will be able to find a lot of worms. We feed the worms only, not the beetles. The worms are where the uh, geckos are going to get the most nutrition.
Beating peanut beetles is the easy part. We use carrots, zucchini, uh, butternut squash, any vegetable that's a solid vegetable. We cut the vegetables up into slices and distribute the slices on top of the peanut beetles. And again, in 10 or 15 minutes, those slices are just covered with these beetles. Feeding peanut beetles to the geckos is the easy part. Take the worms, put them into a mealworm cup or other small dish, and the geckos will find them and just devour them. I really feel peanut beetles is an underutilized food item for geckos. And I hope you agree with me. Let's see if a baby crested gecko likes peanut beetles. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, throw a comment down below, hit the like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.